with me, Lucy Parsons. Welcome to today's show. Today, our topic is choose your heart. And as we draw to the end of this year's A-level and GCSE assessments, because they're not exams, (laughs) they're assessments, um, I thought this was a really topical thing um, just to kind of help people just kind of get over the finish line. So I think we can all agree that GCSEs are hard and that A-levels are hard and that they've been particularly hard this year and last year. But what's the alternative? The alternative is even harder and that's what we're thinking about today. So the thing that inspired this was Helen, my head coach on my team, the other day sending me a meme that said, marriage is hard, divorce is hard, choose your heart. Obesity is hard, being fit is hard, choose your heart. Being in debt is hard, being financially disciplined is hard, choose your heart. Communication is hard. Not communicating is hard. Choose your heart. Life will never be easy. It will always be hard. But we can choose our heart. Choose wisely. Now this really struck a chord with me and linked with something that I recently heard from Nicole Sachs who helps people to cure from chronic pain. And what she says is, you have to choose between what hurts and what hurts worse. So are you gonna do the work to get over your chronic pain or are you going to stay as you are? Which of those things hurts worse? All this made me think about how hard GCSEs and A-levels are, particularly at the time of writing, which is, or reading, (laughs) talking, which is May, 2021 when students are taking their final assessments after two years of disruption to their learning. So if GCSEs and A-levels are hard what's the alternative? So there's a mum whose children are in my children's classes at our village primary school. She has three boys including twins She is a younger mum than me. I think she became a mum when she was still a teenager. She works her socks off and always has, but she left school without any qualifications. It was tough for her to find a job that would fit around school hours so she didn't have to pay for childcare. It was tough for her to find a job that she was qualified for. She did find a job in the end, but that meant working nights. She bitterly regrets not doing better at school and getting some good GCSEs. And she works so hard to make sure her boys get more out of their education than she did. Another example of the harder option is my mother-in-law, who got a place at grammar school, but her parents insisted she leave when she was 16 to get a job. They didn't see the point in educating a girl when all she was going to do was get married and have a family. But my mother-in-law is full of regrets. She talks about it frequently that she didn't go further in her education. She always wanted to be part of the workforce, which is the way that she phrases it, and worked as a dispensary assistant in a chemist, then as a teaching assistant but she could never progress in her work because she didn't have the qualifications. Not having those qualifications was definitely hard for her. My own grandmother left school at the age of 14, the school leaving age in the 1930s. Her teacher said it was criminal to take someone out of school who loved learning so much. But that was it. She was sent by her father to the town 10 miles from the farm where she grew up to manage a cafe he had bought at the age of 14. And once I went on a teaching exchange to Uganda. 
When I arrived at the school in the mornings, there would be loads of students hanging around on the road at the entrance to the school. When I asked why they were there, I was told that they were overdue their school fees and weren't allowed to attend school until the fees were paid. But they were so desperate to be educated that they would stand at the entrance in the hope they would be let in. For most, life is hard. And the past 14 months with the pandemic have been incredibly hard, particularly for young people cut off from their friends, teachers and normal school life. But for most, it's harder in the long run to choose not to do your best in your GCSEs and A-levels. Having these qualifications doesn't guarantee that your life will be easy but they definitely smooth your path to easier ways of living. Choose your heart. Choose your studies. Choose your revision. Choose your education. I hope that struck a chord with you and I think the whole concept of choose your heart really lays out the choices that you're making in your life. It might be hard to say no to the Xbox and get on with the revision. Or it might be really hard, you know, if you're really tired, just to get on with it and push on through right to the end. But it's easier to do that than to suffer the long-term consequences of not doing that in many, many situations. If you'd like more help making studying and revision for GCSEs and A-levels easier (laughs) then. I'd be very happy to help. You can join the Extraordinaries Club where I teach students how to study in the best way for them, saving them time and helping them get better grades. So even if you choose hard, hard can be easier if you know exactly how to do it well. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful day and goodbye.